I'm Diasha. In this series of lessons, we are studying how the idea of acids and bases can be used to classify substances into categories. So far, we have established that there are chemicals that change color when placed in different solutions. These chemicals are called indicators. Indicators provide us with a method of sorting matter into three broad categories, acid, neutral and base. We have seen that the periodic table can also help us predict which category an oxide of an element may fall into. We have noticed that the oxides formed from metals found on the left hand side of the periodic table are basic, but oxides of non-metals are acidic. We also observed that not all acids are the same, neither are all bases. We showed that there is a trend when moving across the periodic table from left to right. Can you remember what the trend is? That's right, the strength of the bases decreases when moving from group 1 to group 4, but the strength of the acids increases when moving from group 4 to group 7. So we have showed that there is a range in the acidity of different substances. At the one end of the scale we have strong acids, then weak acids, neutral substances, then weak bases, and finally strong bases. In our previous lesson we introduced a scale to measure this range of acidity. This scale is known as the pH scale. We used a special indicator sensitive to even small changes in acidity called a universal indicator to establish this pH scale. We showed how the color of the indicator can tell us the pH of the solution we are testing. We used this idea for the task that was given. I hope you are all able to complete your task and have filled in your table. We are just about ready to check out the answers, so have your work ready in front of you. Before we begin though, I would like to show you the pH sensor in more detail. I have plugged it into my laptop computer. Now this electronic sensor can be placed into a solution and will read out the value of the pH on the computer screen. We will use this to check the readings we got using the universal indicator. Here we go. Let's look at test tube 1. It has a reddish color and I think using the universal indicator reference chart that the pH is about 1. Now let's see what the reading from the sensor is. Here it is, 1,5. That's quite impressive. The simple indicator chart gave us the correct reading. This is definitely an acid. Let's repeat this for the other three solutions. Now I have completed the chart. Check your answers with me. Test tube 2 is 6,84, test tube 3 12,07 and test tube 4 0,80. This confirms that test tube 2 contains a neutral solution, test tube 3 is basic and test tube 4 is acidic. Don't worry if your results aren't exactly the same. As long as they're close to these values, you're okay. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to describe how acids and bases are used in the real world and conduct an investigation on soil samples. In this lesson, we will focus on two of the most important uses of acids and bases that apply particularly in Africa. When you think of Africa, there are many ideas that spring to mind. Our continent and country have huge potential, untapped resources, but great challenges. Poverty and the HIV AIDS pandemic are examples of these challenges. When looking at the potential of Africa, 
there's no limit to what we could achieve. But we need to go back to basics, back to our roots, to the soil of Africa. The hopes and dreams of our people lie in African soil. If we could unlock the potential of our soil, we could produce more crops, provide more food and eradicate poverty. Now, I think that John is busy collecting some soil samples. Let's go and see what he's up to. Hi, Diasha. I'm collecting some soil from this garden. We're going to test these soil samples later in the lab. Come with me while I go and get the next one. Have you noticed how very few plants grow under trees, particularly pine trees? Maybe it's got something to do with the acid in the soil. Let's take a sample here and we'll test it in the lab. Right, let's go back to the lab now. Should be very interesting. Yeah, I wonder what he's up to today. I can't wait to see. <laughs> well, let's ask him. Hi guys. Hi John. Hello, John. Look what I've got here. I've got some soil samples. This one taken from the garden and this one taken from under some pine trees. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this plastic container here to make it a nice filter. We're going to put the sample of soil in and then add water to it and then we'll be able to test the pH of the drained water. This will give us an idea of what the pH of the soil is. Isn't that cool? It's That's very nice. clever. <laughs> okay, great. Won't you add some soil to each of these containers and then add some water in? What? A bit enough. more? A little bit more, a, little, a few more teaspoons. Okay. Right, now it's time to add some water. Okay. And then let's pick it up. That's fine. There you go. Oh, thank you. Is that enough? Yeah, that's fine. Give it a stir as well. Pick up the, the outer bottle. It's dripping through nicely. But the water's looking quite clean. It's because of the paper towel there, the, the tissue paper, that's acting as a filter, as a sponge. Okay. So it's stopping any of the muck getting through, but it's giving us the drainage water. Now what we want to do is to use some of that universal indicator, take a few drops of that and add to this water, runoff water. Won't you do that now, Keke? Okay. Okay, let's add it. That's it. A bit more. Water. No, that's fine. Okay. That's plenty. Now I'm going to put this onto one side. You can see the color of this corresponds to a greenish yellow. Oh, yes, it does. And we can read off on the universal indicator label that what the pH is. Can you see that we can read off the pH of this lies at about 6.5, which means that this is acidic. Okay. I wonder if your soil sample will be just as acidic. I'm Shall we not sure if I have enough water in here. Yeah, no, that'll be fine. Okay. We'll get some from there. Can I ask you just to hold that? Sure. In the meantime, I'll add the universal indicator. And let's give it a stir. Now you can see this one is a darker green. So the pH here is definitely higher up on the scale. It's closer to the 7. Yeah. So by testing the soil samples, we've been able to use universal indicator to show a range. Isn't that great? Bye, Diasha. There is great concern about how pollution is changing our soil. Gas released when coal or wood is burnt dissolves into water found in the atmosphere. And eventually, when this water rains down on the earth, it has become acidic. This is called acid rain and is a concern not only in Africa, but in many parts of the world. It is thought 
that acid rain contributed to the destruction of the Black Forest in Germany. There are, however, solutions to these problems. When soil is too acidic, farmers can add lime to the soil. Lime is a base and will neutralize the acid in the soil. Farmers have learned that growing the same crop all the time is not the solution. It is better to rotate crops and in this way prevent all the minerals and soil nutrient being leached out of the soil. By using lime, the correct amount of fertilizers and applying scientific farming methods, Africa's soil can not only feed herself, but become the bread basket of the world. Africa's soil is rich in potential, not only to supply food, but to meet the world's demand for materials. In South Africa, our economy depends on mining. We are fortunate enough to have large mineral deposits in this country. The ore that is mined is not useful to anyone. The rocks need to be crushed and the different elements separated out. This extraction process requires the use of many different chemical techniques, including the use of acids. The fine crushed rocks need to be placed in an acid bath in order to free the metal from the rock. Once the metal ions are separated from the rock, they can be recovered and the metals can be purified by the refining process. The challenge for South Africa is to use the refined product to manufacture useful products that can be sold both here and exported to other countries. Too often, we have been exporting raw materials and then importing manufactured items containing our own raw materials at very high prices. In your task for today, I would like you to collect soil samples from two different areas near your home or school and test them using your natural indicator. Remember to tabulate your results and write a conclusion from your investigation. In our next lesson, we will be traveling to the cradle of humankind to examine how acids and bases formed man's first homes. So until then, goodbye.